The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Our hostess has disappeared. My thoughts exactly. I'm not so sure. Just between you and me, I think Joe has a little crush on Lori. Well, Frank is serious and methodical, while Joe is kind of happy-go-lucky and impulsive. I kind of like Frank. I kind of like Joe. Neither. I like Ned. Remember? Before she disappeared. Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. My first order of business is to find out what happened to Lori. Lori invited us on this train trip in hopes that someone will find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. No, but I can tell you one thing: there's more to the people on board this train than meets the eye, including Lori. Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Jake used to see strange lights at night bobbing alongside the train and thought it was Camille dancing. I saw these strange lights outside the train, the same lights Jake used to see. Only he said it was Camille's ghost dancing beside the train. Charlena Purcell said Jake may have had to keep his wife's body with him on the train until the ground had thawed enough to bury her. John Gray has set up a bunch of equipment in Camille's train car in hopes of documenting distortions in the electromagnetic field caused by her residual energy. Lori Gerard finds it a little unnerving too. Lori gave me a letter that Jake Hurley wrote to his niece, telling her how to find his gold mine. Someone threw the emergency brake and almost derailed the train. Well, it looks that way, although I sure don't know why. According to Joe, someone or something. If you like funky little museums, Copper Gorge has one that's right up your alley. Looking for things that may have belonged to Jake Hurley. Talking to the curator. The very strange curator. I get the definite feeling Lori Gerard has a thing for Tino Balducci. I think he thinks he is. Let's just say I'm glad he doesn't work for our police department. Tino Balducci definitely has a thing for Lori Gerard. Apparently, Tino and Lori went out a couple of times, but he broke it off. It appears that John Gray is our brake-pulling saboteur. Get this: it turns out that Tino Balducci pulled the emergency brake. John Gray claims to have Camille's voice on tape. Charlena and Lori had this big, huge argument, and you'll never guess why. It makes me think that Charlena is a lot more devious than she appears. It makes me think that Lori may not be quite as dumb as she looks. I'm in the middle of nowhere, and the train seems to have left without me. If I told you that I needed a hint, what would you say? I discovered this cabinet full of old dolls in the caboose. I went inside the crypt where Jake buried his wife, Camille. No, it was very peaceful, almost pleasant. Yes, I couldn't wait to leave. Did I tell you what Frank Hardy is doing? He said he did. Apparently, Joe has trouble boiling water. Did you get the picture I sent you? Did you get the pictures I sent you? Did you get the other pictures I sent you? Did you get the other picture I sent you? I'll talk to you guys later. Talk to you soon. I better go. Catch you later. Still working on it. Not yet. No problem. That was easy. Finally, that was hard. No problem. Finally, that was hard. Where'd all this stuff come from? Are you Buell? How much does it cost to play them? Are they hard? Where'd all these artifacts come from? And you make money by selling taffy? No offense, but it doesn't look like you're attracting that many tourists. So this is some kind of museum sample, as in free sample? Do you by any chance have any of Jake Hurley's things in here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Would it be okay if I tried to open it? So it's never been opened. I'd really like to see what's inside it. There has to be some way to open it. But Charlena is very busy. What if she won't come? You know what? I've got a better idea. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlena Purcell's career? Have you, by any chance, ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J H carved into it? But your great great uncle. Do you really think Buell would approve of you using something that belonged to some poor miner to open coconuts? Hey, I could have just gotten you Charlena's autograph, but instead I got you an autographed picture, which is way better. You owe me. Sure. Like what? You got a deal. If I have to. Oh no! I would never do that. It was pretty tempting, but nope, I sure didn't. Oh no! I would never do that. Well, yeah, I won't. Thank you. It was fun talking to you. Great talking to you.
Pleasure talking to you. Hmm, what are you working on? I hope I'm not disturbing you. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? How well do you know her? Nancy Drew, you and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. You remember me? You don't remember me, do you? What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Have you ever met Lori's other guests before? Uh, excuse me for a second. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Where was he from? When did he buy this train? So he went west and became a miner? Where did he meet Camille? The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? Do you think he's a good investigator? Well, thank you. I think. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? Do you think she could do it? Have you discussed any of her ideas with her? What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? You weren't angry? Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? What topic is that? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. You stole one of her ideas? And that's what you were arguing about? I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autographed picture would be even better. No, not yet. Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Great! You do? Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? I have a pencil here somewhere. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? But why was his train found out in the middle of nowhere with just the dead engineer on board? What about his wife, Camille? dying on the train like that. How do you think Jake's engineer wound up dead on the train in the middle of nowhere? What do you think happened to Camille? How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? That'd be great. Thank you. Were you able to find the name of Jake's train engineer? Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? What do you think their motive was? Have you run across many haunted train stories in the course of your research? You didn't go on Tino's expedition to Jake's mine? I'll let you get back to your writing. I should get going. Well, I'll let you go. I'll touch bases with you later. Great news! I think. See, Frank and Joe Hardy have invited me to help them solve a mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train. But not just any train. A train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. All of its passengers had simply vanished. Some people say the train is jinxed. Others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy Boys, but I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know, one way. There, all done. Mm. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, man. Mm. That should do it. There, that looks right. Whoa! Whoa! I just thought you might want to call the police or something. Did you know she was going to disappear? But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Shouldn't you at least call the authorities? Uh, yeah, this is Lori. No, my name's Nancy Drew. Could I just ask you a few questions? How long have you worked for Lori? So you have no idea who threw the brake? Is there any way that brake could have been activated accidentally? Where have you two been? Did you talk to him? Any idea what he was doing? Actually, I really haven't been anywhere... Catch you later. Did you see what it was? Did you ask him about it? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. I kind of agree with Frank. I kind of agree with you. 
ATAC? Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose, and as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. Are you kidding? You bet I do. Missed what? Who? So you don't know what they were arguing about? Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. It would be nice to know his name. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption Jake designed, but to operate it, you apparently need a pickaxe, some kind of lamp or lantern, and a spyglass. As a matter of fact, I think I've found the spyglass I need. My thoughts exactly. Just let me know if you run into any of those items around here, okay? I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it, you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Remember the design for that contraption I told you about? Well, I think Jake gave the pickaxe and lantern that you need to operate it to somebody named Buell. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Well, nothing. Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer? That James Thurston guy? Who was the next person on the scene? What did the engineer say? Do you think she could have thrown the brake and snuck back to her laptop without your seeing her? There's no way Lori could have thrown the brake, unless she had someone else do it. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. Tino found one of John Gray's thermometers by the emergency brake handle and is getting ready to throw the book at him. Tino thinks he did it to hype the ghost factor and make it sound like he was onto something big so the cable company won't cancel his show. Tino thinks it's because John's TV show is in danger of being canceled. But when I asked John, he told me his show was just picked up by a broadcast network. That was my first question, which makes me wonder if maybe Tino's the one who's up to something. Guys, what's going on? Way to go, Frank. Way to go, Joe. Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Got anything else? Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. Are you sure that's all he said? Do you think he could have been pulling your leg? Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Great. Catch you later. Ah, and you found that out when you stopped there so Joe could get a hamburger. Did you talk to him? Talk to you later. See you later. See you soon. See you in a bit. How do you think I should go about finding Lori? There's an old sampler in Camille's car that has a train on it and this weird scale in Jake's car, but I have no idea what to do with them. Any suggestions? I got this weird slug that looks like a little coin from Tino. But now what? I found this weird little coin or slug or something in Camille's car. But now what should I do? Any idea how to open the old cigar box I found in Jake's car? I have the feeling the letters A-G that are on that old-fashioned cigar box mean something. But I, for one, don't know what. How about you guys? I need to find a bunch of gemstones, but I don't know where to look for them. Any ideas? I still don't have all the gemstones I need. Help! I think I've got all the gemstones I need, but how am I supposed to know which gemstone is what? I need to unlock the door to the caboose, but I'm clueless. Hint, please. I could use some help when it comes to opening that cabinet in the caboose. Got any hints? What's the deal with the grid with all the letters that's in the caboose? That dial on the work table in the car next to the caboose has got me stumped. When it comes to what I'm supposed to do with all those dolls, I'm absolutely without a clue. I don't get how I'm supposed to figure out each doll's name. Do you know? How do I get that compartment on the stove open? I could use some advice. I'm not sure what to do with the colored blocks I found in that drawer in the sleeping car. Do you guys know? The key to Camille's crypt fell through a grate in the cemetery. I'm stumped when it comes to getting it out. What can I do to win that racehorse game in the taffy house? I need to win that gold miner game in the taffy house, but I can't. Am I doing something wrong? I need to beat Tino's score at this lizard game he has, but to do that, it looks like I'm going to need some advice. I'm clueless when it comes to opening the old trunk that's in the taffy house. 
What can you tell me about those pillars with all those squiggly lines on them that are in Camille's crypt? Any idea where I can get a thin piece of paper so I can make rubbings of what's on those pillars in the crypt? Something is locked in Camille's crypt that I probably need to open. But to do that, I'm gonna need a hint. There's some kind of old-fashioned steeplechase game in Camille's car, but I'm not sure how to play it. I found a piece of sheet music, but the question now is, what am I supposed to do with it? What do you think I should do with a dance step pattern I found? How do I move that painting of the eagle that's in the dining car? It doesn't seem to want to budge. When it comes to connecting those pipes, I'm wide open to suggestions. There's a panel in the sleeping car that I'd like to open, but it's got a four-digit tumbler lock on it. How can I get it open? How about a clue that'll help me get that grate in Camille's car open? Would you, by any chance, know how to use that special tool to open that grate in Camille's car? That contraption of Jake's that's supposed to show me where his mine is. I can't figure out where it gets its power. Any thoughts? I think I have the lamp, the spyglass, the pickaxe, the map, and all the gemstones that were listed on the diagram I found. Now what do I do? The handle of the pickaxe broke when I pulled on it, but I think I can fix it with duct tape if I knew where I could get some. Any idea how to open that medieval box John Gray keeps his duct tape in? Jake's lamp seems to be out of fuel. What should I do now? I think I found the entrance to Jake's mine, but all these boulders have fallen down in front of it. I need some words of wisdom. I've got all the gemstones that were listed in that diagram, but I'm not sure where to put them. What do you guys think? How about a hint? Never mind. Bye. You look pretty busy. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. What have you got? If it concerns something ghostly, I'd rather not. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? Do you really think that a moving train can be haunted? Yeah, you do. Oh, heck no. Why, you're measuring the whoozy whatsism with your trusty gizmometrometer thing. That's very interesting. That's a little hard to swallow. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. You don't think Tino Balducci will be able to track her down? What's your opinion of Charlena Purcell? What do you think of Tino Balducci? Is Lori a friend of yours? Maybe she planned it that way. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Thanks, I think I will. That's okay. Maybe somebody else around here has some. <sighs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Not yet. Are you by any chance missing a small digital thermometer? Because Tino Balducci found it by the emergency brake handle when he was dusting it for fingerprints. And now he thinks you're the one who pulled it. Is it true that your show is in danger of being canceled? Have you been in this room the whole time you've been on the train? Any truth to the rumor that your show's about to be canceled? Were you in this room the whole time prior to that emergency break thing? I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. You're not? Charlena said Jake Hurley used to see them too. Only he attributed them to his dead wife, Camille. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Whatever it's called, it was unnerving, to say the least. I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose, so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Me? I'm not in any trouble. I'm confused. Are you a scientist or a psychic? Could you be more specific? No offense, but I don't believe you. So are you making any progress in here? You've got something? Frankly, I'm not into this ghost stuff, so I think I'll pass. Okay... I hear Tino took you and Lori for a little hike today. Do you think Camille's residual psychic energy is what threw that emergency break? But it's possible. So a person pulled that handle. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? I really, really need a pen. Could I borrow one from you? I won't keep you any longer. Well, I'll catch you later. Thanks for the chat. I'll let you get back to work. No, but I will. No, but I'm getting close. Nancy. Nancy Drew. So it was just all for show? Was anyone else in on the trick? Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Why do you need a train to find out what happened to him? How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? What about the other people you invited on this trip? How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? How well do you know your guests? Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. What about Tino Balducci? What about Charlena Purcell? How well do you know Tino Balducci? How well do you know Charlena Purcell? 
And I understand that you and Charlena had a big argument earlier. What was the argument about? I was under the impression that you practically worshipped her. You mean feet of clay? Eventually. Well, closer. I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. I'm a good detective, remember? So it's true? Would you happen to have a pen I could borrow? Do you know if there's any duct tape around here? Do you have any idea who threw the emergency brake? You do? How do you know? She is dead, you know. Did you see something? Not Jim, Joe, Joe Hardy. I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Not Francie, Nancy. That'd be great. You don't have to give me a head start. Don't worry, you can trust me. I wouldn't get your hopes up too high. The mine might be totally worthless, you know. Uh, thank you. I hear Tino took you and John on a trek to Jake's mine. He led you to an outhouse? Did he apologize? What did John say? For what? Well, I can't argue with him there. Guess I'd better get to work. We'll talk some more later. I'll come back later. Bye. Lori, are you all right? It is now. I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. It's Nancy. No one is available to take your call. That's right. Nancy Drew, you've got a better memory than our hostess. I didn't mention it before because it's very bizarre. That's right. You can read it if you want. You mean become a police detective? No, I never have. Well, I don't know. Do you like what you do? Yes, I sure did. Tell me about them. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. I heard all they had was a plastic knife from a carry-out chicken place. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Where do you think it came from? Do you think it had anything to do with Lori's disappearance? May I see it? What are you going to do with it? Oh, thank you. I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. It turns out that slug wasn't so worthless after all. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? You don't like her? What about John Gray? Have you talked to John Gray? How did you and Lori meet? She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Did you two go out? How come you told me you and Lori never went out, and she told me you did? When people start answering them honestly, I do. I'm a detective. You know how it is. If you didn't want to dump her, why did you? Guess I'll just have to go talk to Lori again. But you didn't stop caring. Did you ever tell Lori any of this? Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Sounds good to me. I think I'll pass. If your offer's still open, could I try to win that pen from you now? Do you by any chance have any duct tape? Maybe some other time. Could I try to win that pen from you again? Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket. You don't think there's anything helpful in there? Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? So you have no idea who threw the brake? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? Who else have you told about this? You're going to arrest him? But couldn't someone else have dropped that thermometer? You're the one who pulled that emergency brake, aren't you? You stole one of John Gray's thermometers and planted it at the scene. Care to explain how packing material from the box those thermometers were in wound up on the floor over there? You're right, you don't. Neither do the other passengers. But unless you give me a good reason not to, I think I'll tell them anyway. Well, no harm done, I guess. Well, sure. Maybe later. Do you think I could take a closer look at that cougar statue? Thank you. Interesting. I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? What did you find? You know where the mine is? Actually, I carry a pencil. So, what do you think happened to Lori? When do you think that will be? So, you're gathering facts? So, how did your expedition to Jake's mine turn out? I'll try again later. I'm kind of in a hurry, Mr. Balducci. Thanks for your help. You've been a big help. It's been great talking to you. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. There, I did it! <gasps> Oh, no. What I need is some duct tape. Lori? That's where Jake's mine is. Brimstone Canyon. Looks like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. 
James Thurston. Somebody must have thrown the emergency brake. Better not mess with that puppy. That looks just like the stuff John Gray has his thermometers packed in. Sorry. Oops. Nothing happened. Hmm. This contraption is obviously powered by something, but what? Those look like steam pipes. Brimstone Canyon. Sounds like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. I hope. Hello? I did it! I won! What is that? Looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Your humble friend, Abe. Oh, my gosh. This is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is the day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. Camille. It figures he'd be carrying a picture of her. Hmm, there's something underneath it. Lori! Oh, nuts, no signal. Still no signal. The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. I can use this to open that grate I saw in Camille's car. Sorry. I better not. John's still got his microphone set up. I bet I know what this is for. Okay, thank you. J.H. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Looks like Tino's through dusting for fingerprints. Pretty. Looks like some kind of gemstone. Another gemstone. This looks just like the insignia I saw on the train. I'll bet this was Jake's trunk. J.H. I wonder if this used to be Jake Hurley's trunk. If this was his trunk, maybe the pickaxe and lamp that I need are inside. I can't open this yet. I still don't have permission. Hmm, this indentation looks familiar. Well, here's Jake's lamp, but where's his pickaxe? Mmm, wax paper for the taffy. The words Jake told Ruth about must be hidden on these pillars. Maybe they'd stand out if I made some rubbings. If I had some paper, I could use my pencil to make a rubbing of them. Wax paper would be ideal. Oh, something tells me I'd better not eat anymore. Well, there's the key. Darn, the name of the shoes is so faded I can't tell what it is. Looks like to get some taffy on a stick, I'm going to need two different tokens. Oh no, my battery's dead. Uh-oh, I'm getting low on batteries. Battery's still dead. Can't make a call when I'm out of batteries. This thing's no help without batteries. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. Silver. What do all those colors have to do with silver? A very primitive periodic table from the 1800s. That's something you don't see every day. Citrine, amethyst, zircon. Those are all gemstones, I think. Locked, naturally. I wonder how you open it. A square and a duck. Now, where have I seen those before? It looks like this thing opens up. But how? Gotcha! In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? If I am supposed to make rubbings of these pillars, I'll need a pencil, which I already have, and some nice thin paper. Wisdom, charity, purity, eternity. This looks like some sort of game. Oops, darn. Shoot! Wipe out. I did it! Wonder what's in here. Hmm, looks like sheet music for the piano. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Okay, got my dancing shoes on. Now what? Looks like a dance floor, maybe? A spyglass. Cool, I'm keeping this. A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. There, good as new. Oh, sorta. It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> Guessing could take me a while. I wonder what's under here, and what the deal is with those weird-looking bolts. The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, 
to towns which can be difficult to find, to Central City, Virginia City, and Dodge City, to Calico, Tombstone, and Silverado. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly, but to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. This will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you, words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave, and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her, and heard her, and feel her presence on the train even today, twenty years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. I'll bet those are maps, but how do I know which one I need? And how do I get it out of there? According to that diagram I found, those six gemstones are supposed to go in these six holders, but I have no idea which one goes where. If those are candle holders, they are very strange. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. <sighs> Wrong again. Whoa, looks like I did something right. And we have liftoff. Okay, looks like that goes there. Uh-oh, must be out of fuel. Oh, no, that's got to be the entrance to Jake's mine, but it's totally blocked by boulders. Hmm, maybe I can use this cannon to blast those boulders out of the way. Well, that didn't do any good. The opening's too small. Those boulders look pretty precariously balanced. I'd better try again. That does not look very safe. Not quite big enough. Too dangerous. Try again. That ought to do it. What in the world is that thing? That must be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Strange looking tool. Wonder what it's for. According to the letter Jake sent Ruth, there should be four words somewhere in here. But I sure don't see them. I have a pencil. All I need is some paper. Carbide. Just what I need to make that lamp I found work. Camille with Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. Sadie Crawford. Teddy Eberhardt. Thomasina O'Neill. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Eliza Sandberger. That tool I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. <sighs> Looks like I can't access the web. I still can't get online. Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? More pipes to connect. More pipes. Why am I not surprised? And naturally, we have still more pipes. Wonder how you're supposed to get this open. Locked. Guess Camille didn't want anyone else playing with them. Do you have any idea how to unlock this? A square and a duck. That square and that duck look very familiar. Wonder why it's got all those symbols on it like that. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. I've seen some of those symbols before. Hmm, I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. There, with any luck, I just opened the stove in the dining car. Taffy on a stick. Hey, maybe I could use this to fish the crypt key out from under that grate. A gemstone. The little book of samplers. P-B-C-U. Another slug. Could come in handy. Looks like some sort of steam valve. And we have liftoff. There we go. Darn, I must be missing something. Still don't have everything. It works. Nothing. Hmm, maybe the projector's not working because it's not getting any power. Sounds like steam from the engine is moving through those pipes now. Wow, glowing lizards. Cool. But weird. Looks like I'm going to need my flashlight. Whoa, what's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward blue. Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward green. Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward orange. Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward red. Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward yellow. Now it's pointing toward blue. Now it's pointing toward green. Now it's pointing toward orange. Now it's pointing toward purple. Now it's pointing toward red. Now it's pointing toward yellow. Wonder what that's doing there. Another symbol. Uh-oh. 
There's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles, but if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. I've seen that symbol before. Okay, so far so good. Uh-oh, I think I made a boo-boo. Nuts. Jake Hurley, I presume? Maybe I could get out of here in this. So Lori pushed that button, slid the shelves open further, squeezed through, and disappeared. Very clever. This must be how Lori disappeared. This must have been the sleeping car. Can't check that off yet. Haven't done that yet. Still have to do that. Still working on that. Check. Finish that. I'm done with that. That's done. Woohoo! Just like National Velvet. There's an image on each of those buttons. They tell a story, maybe? Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. I wonder if this has something to do with that list of cities Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. I kind of feel like Ginger Rogers. And what does A.G. mean? Wonder what Jake used this for. This goes here, and this goes here. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? I need to find the right gemstone. This is where a gemstone goes. I need to find the gemstone that goes here. The lamp fuel goes in here. I need lamp fuel. Fuel, that's what this thing needs. I need to match that shape. Something fits in here. What fits here? Still broken. How can I repair this? I need to fix the handle. I need something that will turn the bolts. Looks like I need a special tool. To turn those bolts, I'll need some kind of tool. Jake said a lamp goes here. I need a lamp. If I had a lamp, this is where I'd put it. Jake said a pickaxe goes here. I need a pickaxe. This is where Jake's pickaxe goes. I need some music. What shall I play? If I had some music, I could play a tune. Jake said a spyglass goes here. I need a spyglass. If I had a spyglass, I'd put it right here. I need something long and sticky. I'll never get that key at this rate. I just need to find something that key will stick to. I need a token. Can't get anything without a token. This machine only takes tokens. I need something that'll help me make sense out of all those lines. Maybe making a rubbing would help. If there's a hidden message here, I'll never find it at this rate. It's locked. I need a key. Can't get in without a key. It would be rude to use it now. This is not the right time. No signal. No time for that now. I'd better wait till later. I can't get in there right now. Someone might hear me. I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, to Fatima, that'd be great. If you could have it say, to Fatima, that'd be great. I'll bet I need this stone to build that thing in the diagram I found. But if I remove it now, Tina will know I'm onto something. Sickly Sarah caught a germ so new, it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue. This door goes outside. Opening it now would not be a good idea. Can't go outside until the train stops. If I don't find a way out of here soon, I'm going to run out of air. Hmm. Nothing happens. I'll bet I have to wind it up first. Jake must have made those symbols. The question is, why? I need to slow down. Going uphill will slow me down. I need to go faster. Going downhill will make me go faster. Oh no, I'm going too fast. Oh no, I've stopped. I'll never get out of here now. Guess I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. What did you find? Mama! Oh, 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 oh. Now where the heck am I? That lamp felt pretty empty. I'll bet it's out of fuel. Doesn't work. Maybe it's because I still need to get fuel for that lamp. Darn, must be empty. Well, so much for that. Still empty. Wonder what's in here. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. That could be one of the gems I need. Maybe Tino will let me take a closer look. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. Jake's mind must be somewhere on this map, but where? Something tells me I better not go in there without permission. And I lose. Rats. Fooey. Loser. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And we have a winner. Yes, indeedy. No token. Guess it's all out. Must be out of tokens. Wonder what's supposed to go here. It'll take forever to dig through those rocks. There's got to be another way out of here. Now how am I going to get out of here? 
I'd better get out of here before something else caves in. I can't get through here. I wonder if that eagle has something to do with the eagle in that painting in the dining car. An eagle. Where else have I seen an eagle? There. Hopefully that just moved the painting of the eagle in the dining car away from whatever's behind it. There's still water in it, which means it must be out of carbide. There. It should work now. Oh, right. This is the entrance to Jake's mine. I wonder if it has something to do with that symbol I saw before. I wonder if it has something to do with those symbols I saw before. I should be able to get through there now. I bet the animals are trying to get to the right shore. I bet the animals should start from the left shore. Nope. Darn. Shoot. Nuts. Hello? Hi, Bess. George, get over here. It's Nancy. It's about time you called. What's up? Hello? Hey, Bess, it's me. Got the name of those dancing shoes yet? Still working on it. Hello? Me again. Just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command. Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? Hello? It's me. Were you able to get a hold of Frank and Joe? We couldn't get through. They must have their phone turned off or something. Hello? It's me. Still haven't talked to Frank and Joe. Is everything okay? Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, Nance. Listen, I'm dying to know. What's it like to finally work with Frank and Joe Hardy? Hello? Hey, Bess. It's me. So where's the picture of the dancing shoes you were going to send us? And me. Hey, George. What's up? Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's the one who insisted we call you, Nancy. Only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brushstroke, she's like, Where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I could care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really! You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not, you should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, Nan? Hello? Nancy! Hi, it's me! Hi, Bess. What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's been begging me to call you ever since she got here. Only because you've been driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of them with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the walls. Anyway, send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone and we'll get right on it. Send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? But hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauillant. C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-T-E-S-C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauillant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no lorry. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Oh, come on. You don't really think something's happened to her, do you? Oh, Bess, you're incorrigible. Hey, if you don't want to hear, just go over there and don't listen. She's listening. So what's it like? It figures. I thought you liked Joe. I've always thought he was cute. Personality-wise, Frank's more my type. Well, the real question is... They're not trying to boss you around and be all manly all the time? No, not at all. They're great. George has a thing for Frank. Well, you like Joe. But the real question here is, 
Which one does Nancy like? Ooh, yeah. Which one do you like? I knew it! You're just as big a sucker for those boyish good looks of his as I am. You're not going to say anything to him, are you? Me? My lips are sealed. The way they were when I told you that I liked that boy who works at the snack shop? That was different. How was it different? I was younger then and had less self-control. It was last week, Bess. Right. Don't worry, Nance. If she starts to say anything to Frank, I'll just stomp on her foot. It was last week, Bess. Right. Don't worry, Nance. If she starts to say anything to Joe, I'll just stomp on her foot. Ow! Hey, what'd you do that for? Just practicing. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died, and he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Bess, do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Wow, there you are on a train with two attractive guys, a celebrity cop, a famous writer, a TV star, a rich brat, and a ghost. And here we are, painting the pigsty, otherwise known as Bess's room. What makes you say that? Uh, just a feeling I get. She just got paint all over my face. I didn't mean to. Trust me, nobody on that train could possibly be any more dangerous than Bess with a loaded paintbrush in her hand. Ha ha. Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. Super creepy. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Which is hard when you're practically covered in paint. Say what? He's looking for Camille's ghost. Don't you ever watch him on TV? Just because I watch him doesn't mean I understand him. I don't blame her. Bess. For the 972nd time, there's no such thing as ghosts. I know that. I just have a small problem believing that. Ow! Bess, watch it! Oops. Sorry. What happened? If Lori knows where the mine is, why doesn't she just make a beeline for it? Because apparently Jake was too paranoid to tell his niece outright where it was. So he filled the letter with all these weird, obscure clues. I don't think Lori could make heads or tails of them. I know I barely can. Sounds like when he lost his wife, Jake may have lost a few marbles as well. Someone tried to sabotage the train? Maybe someone wants Jake's gold all to himself. Or herself. That doesn't make sense, Bess. Nobody even knows where Jake's mine is yet. I know! Maybe the gold from his mine is already on the train somewhere! So, Jake stashes a pile of gold ore on his train, but so far the only person who's managed to trip over it is the saboteur? I don't think so. What's in it? Stuff from the mining era of the 1880s, mostly. And taffy. Lots of saltwater taffy. Saltwater taffy? I love saltwater taffy! What were you doing in there? Did you find them? Not yet. Well, get back in there and keep looking. Did I mention that I love saltwater taffy? She gets the hint, Bess. Did you find them? I found an old trunk that I'm pretty sure belonged to him. Well, get back in there and get it open. Did I mention that I love saltwater taffy? She gets the hint, Bess. Strange in what way? She was dressed head to toe in this old prospector costume. So for the longest time, I wasn't even sure that she was a she. That is strange. Did I mention that I love saltwater taffy? She gets the hint, Bess. Strange in what way? She was dressed head to toe in this old prospector costume. So for the longest time, I wasn't even sure that she was a she. Fatima is a girl's name, right? Last I heard. Did I mention that I love saltwater taffy? She gets the hint, Bess. I saw him on TV once. He is very cute. Lori thinks he's the world's greatest detective. And you don't? I think the only reason he's famous is because he looks good on camera. Well, I think you two are being way too hard on him. Just because he's good-looking doesn't mean he can't also be smart. In fact, maybe Balducci tries to look incompetent on purpose. You know, to give the bad guys a false sense of security so it's easier to catch them. Ever think of that? No, Bess. I never did. Well, there you go. So there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. Well, find out. I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing. To heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh, yeah. Really? Ooh, I bet the tabloids would love to hear that. What's more, I get the feeling Lori feels the same way about him. You mean there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. 
We'll find out. I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing. To heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh, yeah. Why'd he break it off? Because everybody told him dating her would hurt his credibility. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. It's cool that Balducci lets other people tell him who to date? No, that the three of us know something that, like, maybe four other people in the whole country knows. You scoop the tabloids, Nancy. Bess, calm down. You're slopping paint all over the phone. Oh no, it still works, doesn't it? Hello? Nancy? You still there? Hello? Yes, Bess, I'm still here. Oh, thank goodness. So what other yummy things have you found out? John Gray? Are you sure? Balducci is sure. He found a digital thermometer like John uses on his TV show at the scene of the crime. He theorizes that it fell out of the saboteur's pocket as he was yanking on the brake handle. Looks like Balducci is a decent detective after all. John Gray? Are you sure? Balducci found something of John's at the scene of the crime, but John denied having a motive for throwing the brake. Well, if nothing else, it proves Balducci is a decent detective after all. Balducci did it? He framed John Gray so he could arrest him and get some positive press for himself. I think it finally dawned on him that he's not the great detective everyone thinks he is, and probably never will be. How pathetic can you get? Cute and pathetic. Just my type. Really? Did you hear it? I heard a woman singing, but it was very faint. You heard an actual ghost? According to Charlena, she did. Well, there you go. You heard a ghost. Oh, Bess, you are so gullible. Open-minded. Gullible. Uh, Lori called Charlena a hack. No. Uh, Charlena called Lori an airhead. No. Um, Bess, she doesn't really want you to guess, okay? Tell us, Nan. Well, it seems that Lori sent Charlena a bunch of story ideas, one of which Charlena used in her latest book without telling or paying Lori. Charlena stole something Lori wrote? That's incredible. No, the fact that Lori wrote something that Charlena thought was worth stealing. That's what's incredible. Yeah, better keep an eye on her, Nan. What do you mean you're in the middle of nowhere? I got off the train in a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon to look for Jake's mine. And all of a sudden, the train went chugging away without me. I mean, I'm not in any danger or anything, but I don't have the Hardy Boys number with me and... Say no more. We'll call Frank and Joe and tell them to go back for you right away. I'd say it's about time. I'd say fire away. Old dolls make my skin crawl. Whose were they? Well, I'm assuming they belong to Jake's wife, Camille. Old dolls make my skin crawl. Whose were they? They belong to Jake's wife, Camille. Jake mentioned them in his letter to his niece. They could have been Jake's, you know. I mean, they never had a child of their own, right? So maybe after Camille died, he went a little bonkers. Oh, Bess. Hey, I'm just trying to think outside the box here, okay? Something it wouldn't hurt you to do from time to time, little Miss No Imagination. You know, maybe I'll just put this paintbrush down, walk out that door, and let you do this all by yourself. No! You've got to keep painting! If I don't get this done by tomorrow, I'll be grounded for a month! I was just kidding about your imagination. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Very, very wonderful. That's more like it. Was she still there? As far as I know. Did you see her? No, she was kind enough to stay in her coffin. Was it like totally gross and creepy in there? Any idea how she died? That's still a mystery. I'll bet you Jake had something to do with it. The guy who takes care of the cemetery says he can tell from the way he buried her that Jake must have loved Camille a lot. Any idea how she died? Charlena thinks she probably died of some common disease, like measles or something. I'll bet you Jake had something to do with it. The guy who takes care of the cemetery says he can tell from the way he buried her that Jake must have loved Camille a lot. Any idea how she died? Frank told me that he overheard the grandson of Jake's engineer say she died after she fell and hit her head. Did she fall? Or did Jake, you know, give her a little push? The guy who takes care of the cemetery says he can tell from the way he buried her that Jake must have loved Camille a lot. Ah, but did he love her? Or did he just have a guilty conscience? That's the question. Ooh, this sounds good. What? He's working undercover as a short-order cook at the diner in Copper Gorge, where a grandson of Jake Hurley's engineer hangs out. Frank knows how to cook? Frank is cute, and he cooks? That does it. Which one of you wants to be my maid of honor? Why am I not surprised? Hey, go easy on him. When somebody's that cute, knowing how to boil water is optional. We sure did. Very cool. You bet. Send us more. Pretty neat. More, more. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Got any others? John Gray looks just like he does on his TV show. Yeah, very cute and intelligent. Lori Gerard actually reads in her spare time? It's a romance novel. Ah. Uh, Tino is very photogenic. I'll say. And he looks great in pictures, too. What?
Charlena kind of dresses funny. You know, for a romance novelist, don't you think? Successful people can dress any way they want, Bess. That is the weirdest contraption I've ever seen. Jake Hurley must have been one imaginative dude. That was a picture of Jake and Camille, right? Right. They made a very sweet couple. Don't send any more pictures of tombs, okay? George finds them disturbing. Very funny. Those dolls totally gave me the willies. Yeah, they're like something out of a horror movie. You bet. Keep them coming. Loved them. We want more. Yeah, thanks. Keep it up. We sure did. Very cool. They were okay. I thought they were interesting. Oh, yeah. Ned. Good old dependable Ned. You think he's boring, don't you, Bess? You think I think he's boring? Hey, I think what you think is much more important than what I think. Translation? She thinks he's boring. Bess, whatever I heard was barely audible. For all I know, it could have been a voice off the radio or something. Did the real Camille like to sing? You mean like a ghost? Joe believes in ghosts? How about that? You two have something in common. You mean something else in common. We're both, in our own ways, very cute. Right. Oh, shoot. I keep forgetting. So what else is going on? Remember, when in doubt, call. Let us know what happens. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. We'll be right here. Okay. Well, George, back to work. Okay. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. You bet. I think you better talk to those two friends of yours before you talk to me. Yes? I hear you found our hostess. Congratulations. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? More questions? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. I don't really know her, I just know of her. The only reason I accepted her invitation was because I've come across the name Jake Hurley several times in my research, and this seemed like a good opportunity to learn more about him. What was your name again? Ah, Nancy Drew. No. I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. You are, but I'm quite used to disturbances. You see, wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Voulet, who died about a year after they were married. East Coast, Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. I don't know that. The circumstances surrounding her passing are a bit of a mystery, too. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere, although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before, although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. No, you and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is... well, it's a gift. <sighs> Doesn't everyone? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? Lori and I? We weren't arguing, we were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. And you won. Congratulations. No, no, you don't have to do that. 
A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But technically, yes. Now, legally, she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything, and it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Laurie in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. Imagine that, me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. Anything else? Duct tape? Why, I happen to have a roll right here in my pocket. Don't be a ninny. Of course I don't have any duct tape. What do I look like, a hardware store? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Laurie release me from all the silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller, although I highly doubt it. His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. That does make the story a little more interesting. My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way, after which the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. She probably died of something mundane like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. I came across three references to the fact that Jake had an engineer, but I'm afraid none of them included his name. I failed. Sorry. Well, I know it wasn't me, I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. I don't know about your friends, but perhaps those other two simply thought it would be fun. Boys will be boys. A few, but most train-bound ghosts that I've come across seem to have better things to do than sit around pulling emergency brakes. Please, the man barely knows where his head is. If he's the one who finds that mine, I'll eat my laptop. All right, then. Let me know if you run across anything juicy. Remember, if it's juicy, I want to know about it. My publisher thanks you. That would be nice. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Laurie Gerard has disappeared. Engineer. Hi. I'm busy up here. Now quit bothering me. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm Nancy Drew, one of the passengers. Engineer. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. I talked to you before, very briefly. Engineer, this better be Miss Gerard. Well, actually... Forget it. So? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. It'll be my pleasure, just as soon as Mr. R orders me to. But... Now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. Is this Mr. R? Nice try. Too bad. Sorry, I only take orders from Mr. R. Hey, you got questions? I suggest you ask somebody who doesn't have his hands full operating a 19th century steam-powered locomotive, okay? You're not the one who pulled the emergency brake, are you? No. Good. Because if you were, I'd have to come back there and throttle you. Old as this train is, it's a wonder it stayed on the tracks. Like I just said, if I did, I'd be back there tanning their hide. You pull on the handle, the wheels lock. You don't pull on the handle, they don't lock. 
Did somebody pull on the handle by mistake? I guess it's possible, but if you ask me, anybody that stupid has no business being on a train. Or anywhere else for that matter. Now if you don't mind, I gotta get back to work. Got Charlena's autograph for me yet? Still waiting on that autograph. Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. You need that pickaxe. I need that taffy sorted. Better get moving, little missy. Got that taffy sorted? That taffy ain't gonna sort itself, you know. You want that pickaxe, you better get a move on. Welcome back. You still here? Why, it's the best kind of museum, sister. It's free. You can gape and gawk and ooh and ah to your heart's content. Least you can till I close up. Some daffy on a stick will cost you two tokens. Which you can get by winning both those games over there. Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Danged if I know. Come to think of it, I've never played them. But you're getting me off track here, missy. Fact of the matter is, they're free. Lest you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that and you'll be head first in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Been in the family for years. For centuries, in fact. See, do I sound like a buell to you? Sorry, the costume kind of, you know, threw me off. Oh, right. <laughs> Sometimes I forget I'm wearing this thing. Buell was my great-great-uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawnbrokering. So the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust. And there was Uncle Buell, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So he passed it on to his kin. My great granddaddy's the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. Tourists just love taffy. Especially when you dangle a free sample in front of them to get them hooked. Of course, it ain't really free. That's cause it's the off season. Come summer, we're rolling in tourists. Mostly on account of the taffy. Welcome, stranger. Listen, you by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder? As a matter of fact, yes I did. There's a rumor going around that Charlena Purcell's on board. Is that true? As a matter of fact, yes it is. Hot dang if that don't beat all. I've read every single book that gal's ever written. Best writer what ever lived. Did she get off the train too? I don't think so. She's pretty busy. Welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. Jake who? Hurley. He was a miner. I think he may have left a lamp and a pickaxe with your great-great-uncle. Never heard of him. Of course, that don't mean his stuff's not here. Just means you're just gonna have to look around and see for yourself. But remember, Susie Q, don't touch. Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh, no, of course not. No, I just thought it might contain the lamp and pickaxe that I asked you about before. Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh, no, of course not. It's just that I think it might contain a lamp and pickaxe that used to belong to a miner named Jake Hurley. Well, if it does, you can forget about him, because it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin, and he went to junior college. Well, now, I certainly ain't gonna let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you know, touch it. Not since whoever owned it left it here. Nope, sorry, not gonna happen, little missy. Unless... Unless... Then I guess you'll just be out of luck. Then I guess you'll just be out of luck. No, actually, you will be. Now, how do you figure that? Well... Now, what could be better than me coming face to face with the lady who writes the finest literature this here country's ever seen? Well, that's just it. If you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so I can meet her and get her autograph. Good heavens, of course not. All right. You just get me Charlene's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is... Well, you just better work a little harder. I ain't getting any younger, you know. Well, get a move on. I got where I'm gonna hang it all figured out and everything. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go at that trunk.
Whatever's inside it's all yours. Why? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use a dope in the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? Oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You sneak any freebies while you're at it? <laughs> well, ain't you the goody two-shoes. Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Liar, liar, pants of fire, I saw you, Miss Smarty Boots. And seeing as I don't take kindly to liars, you can just get yourself back over there and sort me up another batch. And you behave yourself this time. Or no pickaxe. Well, I appreciate your honesty. Fact of the matter is, I can never sort that stuff without sneaking a few myself. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. I'll bet it was. Be right here if you got any questions. Ditto, little missy. Oops, sounds like somebody's taking a nap. Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge, breathing the same air as me. Hot dang! Well, tell you what. You get Charlena Purcell to come in here so's I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. Fatima, with an F. None of that weirdo PH stuff. Okay, Fatima, I'll be right back. Hey there, welcome to Buell's Old Time Taffy House. Come on over here. You ain't touching anything over there, are you, missy? You ain't touching anything over there, are you, missy? Oops, I'd better go ask permission before I mess with this. I see you. Don't even think about it, Susie Q. I'm a-watching. Naughty, naughty. Guess I could let you have a piece. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Guess I could let you have a piece. There we go. Hey, don't even think about it. Hey, Nance. Back already? What have you got? What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Nancy, you missed it. Hey, how's it going? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Now you're talking. American Teens Against Crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Aw, oh, come on, you heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it, and unfortunately we really couldn't make out what they were saying. No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. All of which were common everyday items back in Jake's time. But not anymore. What's worse, Jake could have been referring to specific items, like his pickaxe, his spyglass, and who knows where they are now. Good. As for the pickaxe and the lantern, we'll keep our eyes open. Right, Joe? You keep your eyes open. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Buell? 
Joe, show her. Show her what? That old picture we found. Uh, okay. Great. What else do you know about him? Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. The question is, did somebody throw the break or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene, and I saw no one. John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. Not likely, but possible, I guess. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, Joe. John Gray threw the emergency brake? Why would he do that? I still say there's less to all this than meets the eye, if you get my drift. I get your drift, Joe. I have lived with your drift for years. I am saddled with your drift. All right, all right. Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Right. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Absolutely. Not that I know of. You better. You know where to find us. If you need anything, just let us know. Sounds good. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this, he's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. Of course, five seconds later he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is... Unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Hey, Nancy. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. I don't need to talk to anyone at home. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. Hi, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. No luck getting the duct tape out of that box yet? Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. Sup? Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Then, I don't have to explain what I'm doing. What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. Sure, a train is basically nothing but a living space on wheels, and just like a house or a hotel, its walls can capture and hold energy, however infinitesimal, whatever its source. You see, it's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. I doubt it. In fact, 
First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course, like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. You mean so we'd concentrate all our efforts on finding Jake Hurley? Possible, although she really doesn't strike me as being the planning type. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. Got some right there in my gearbox. That's the good news. The bad news is, I can't open the box. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Need something else? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. When I went through the box, I'd pack them in, that one over there. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. Newsflash, my show was canceled. Happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resulting voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom-built, remember. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. I happen to be both. What's commonly referred to as psychic phenomena is all a matter of energy. Just because we don't know where that energy is generated or how to measure it, yet, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Unfortunately, no. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will, reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Take it from me, old mother nature is capable of some pretty scary stuff. So be careful what you say in here. She's listening. Don't remind me. Turns out Tino had no idea where he was going. Good thing for him my fingers were frozen stiff. Otherwise, I would have strangled him. That's a good question. Applying force to an object by distorting its electromagnetic field requires such a highly organized concentration of energy that I'm inclined to doubt it. Ask me again at the end of this trip. Something tells me if we make it that far, and something also tells me that's a pretty big if, all will become clear. Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. Come back anytime. Pleasure talking to you. Goodbye. Take care. Sorry. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. No luck getting the duct tape out of that box yet? Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. Sup? Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. Sure, a train is basically nothing but a living space on wheels, and just like a house or a hotel, its walls can capture and hold energy, however infinitesimal, whatever its source. You see, it's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. I doubt it. In fact, first time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course, like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. You mean so we'd concentrate all our efforts on finding Jake Hurley? Possible, although she really doesn't strike me as being the planning type. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. Got some right there in my gearbox. That's the good news.
The bad news is, I can't open the box. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Need something else? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. When I went through the box, I'd pack them in, that one over there. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. Newsflash, my show was canceled. Happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resulting voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom-built, remember. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. I happen to be both. What's commonly referred to as psychic phenomena is all a matter of energy. Just because we don't know where that energy is generated or how to measure it, yet, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Unfortunately, no. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will, reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Take it from me, old mother nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. So be careful what you say in here. She's listening. Don't remind me. Turns out Tino had no idea where he was going. Good thing for him my fingers were frozen stiff. Otherwise, I would have strangled him. That's a good question. Applying force to an object by distorting its electromagnetic field requires such a highly organized concentration of energy that I'm inclined to doubt it. Ask me again at the end of this trip. Something tells me if we make it that far, and something also tells me that's a pretty big if, all will become clear. Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. Come back anytime. Pleasure talking to you. Goodbye. Take care. Sorry. Hey, come on over here. Don't do that, please. Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. I moved my microphones, so if you want to play the piano, knock yourself out. Thank you. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. Ah! It's an antique lockbox that I found in this abandoned monastery I scoped out on my show last year. You can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. I came up one short. I was hoping to set up at least six in here so I could check for cold spots. How did you know I was missing one? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't, but somewhere along the line, I managed to get a shot of Camille. Where? You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. I put this digital recorder in the corner where Camille showed up in that picture and turned it on so it would just keep recording. Now when you play it back at normal volume, all you hear is background noise. But when you turn the volume way up and run the signal through a filter or two, hear that? I hear something. It kind of sounds like a woman singing. Not just any woman. Camille. Camille. Please don't. Don't even think about it. Nancy? No, no, no. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I don't know. Sorry. I guess. No problem. Don't do that, please. Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. Do you have any idea how to unlock this? You got me. That's just what I thought, too. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? <coughs> 
Sorry, you got me. Why do you want to know that? Be my guest. Sure. Ah! Oh my gosh. I never thought you'd be the one to find me. No offense. Uh, Nadine? Have you figured out where the mine is? Don't you look all excited. What's up? Before you say anything, I just want to say thank you. Yes? Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. Well, not entirely. Just the engineer, and all he did was keep his mouth shut. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram Shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, Dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except I also found this. Because you found me. See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train, too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, if you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mind might be somewhere around there, too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show, and I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train, and now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. I met Tina right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. She hated them. That's an understatement. Let's just say my idol turned out to have dirty feet. Whatever. Let's either talk about something else or not talk at all, okay? So what do you want? How did you know that? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. A pen? A pen. Do I have a pen? Nope, afraid not. Sorry. Duct tape? Duct tape. Nope, afraid not. Sorry. I know exactly who did it. Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. Well, duh. That's why I know it's her. What's more, your friend that Jim Harley guy? Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. Way to go. I knew you could do it, Francie. Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? Think of it as your reward. Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover something huge. Great job, Amy. I know, but Jake's mind my eye. We went tramping through the snow, lugging all this equipment John insisted on bringing, and where do we end up? At this teeny tiny, half-rotten, tumbled-down outhouse.
Well, he said it was the opening to a mine shaft, but then John said if it was, shouldn't the hole be going into the mountain instead of just down? So they stood there arguing until Tino finally grabbed a shovel, went inside, and started digging. What he found was definitely not gold. Of course not. If he didn't have such nice eyes, the man would be a total zero. He called Tino a moron and a whole lot of other things I'd rather not repeat. Tino came to see me. He said you'd made him realize what a jerk he'd been for dumping me, and then he asked me out. Isn't that great? He said he doesn't care what anybody else thinks. He thinks we make the perfect couple. Well, no, but I'll tell you what. Keep me posted. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. I'll be waiting. You go, girl. So do you know what you want to order yet, Edna? I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddaddy was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like just last year all those scientific types were saying your arteries would clog up if you so much as looked at an egg. But nowadays, why well, all of a sudden eggs are chock full of vitamins and proteins, and eating them's not only okay, it's what they recommend. They should either make up their minds or keep their mouths shut. Make eating more pleasant, that's for sure. Did I tell you that my granddaddy was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like just last year all those scientific types were saying your arteries would clog up if you so much as looked at an egg. But nowadays, why well, all of a sudden eggs are chock full of vitamins and proteins and eating them's not only okay, it's what they recommend. They should either make up their minds or keep their mouths shut. Make eating more pleasant, that's for sure. Yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna. I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille Voulet. That's French, you know. Of course, she died so young that poor Jake didn't have time to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy spell and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see, and sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the desert, why, that train would be just like an oven. Anyway, Granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay, but a couple hours later, Jake found her in her room, dead as a doornail. Now there's another expression that kind of makes you wonder. Dead as a doornail? How can something be dead if it was never alive to begin with? And why a doornail? Why not something else that begins with a D? Like... Dish rag or dust mop. Dead as a dust mop. That's kind of got a ring to it, don't you think? The way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that granddad been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hand still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like Granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something, like something finally scared him so bad his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his sixties at the time, and back then that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing ninety-three and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! Now where do you suppose that expression came from? Why not spring goose or summer chicken? Ah, life's just one puzzlement after another, isn't it, Edna? I ever tell you about the mine my granddaddy said Jake Hurley'd found? He found a mine?
A couple years before he died, Granddad told my daddy that Jake found a vein in the mountains somewhere and was mining it all by himself so no one would steal it out from under him. He wouldn't even tell Granddad where the mine was. What he'd do is have Granddad drive the train real slow so he could jump off without Granddad seeing him. Then Granddad would pick him up at a prearranged spot a few days later. Oh, they didn't call him Crazy Jay Curly for nothing. Speaking of crazy, you see how much Abner's charging for a haircut at that shop of his now? Twenty bucks! But what's even crazier is people are actually paying him that. I told him the only way I'd pay him twenty bucks would be if I came in with hair down to my knees. He just laughed and said I was a crazy one. Twenty bucks for a haircut? What is this world coming to? But the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell Granddad the secret to finding his mine. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day, though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mine. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Would you look at that? I think Sally just cracked my glass. Everybody who ever met Jake Hurley thought he was crazy. According to Granddaddy, Jake got his money from his parents. There he was, rich beyond belief, didn't have to work a day in his life. Yet the first chance he got, Jake Hurley went west and became a miner. Squeezed a bunch of money out of his parents by telling them he was going to start a lumber business. Then bought himself a custom-built train. Probably looked a lot like the one that's parked out there at the depot right now. Speaking of which, I heard a rumor that there's celebrities on board that train. There's a guy from cable TV and that police detective who solved all those bank robberies. I forget his name. Oh, and that lady who writes all those romance books. And that rich blonde girl. The one who's always making a public spectacle of herself. Don't know what a group like that be doing in Copper Gorge, but that's the rumor. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray. I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West? You are just awesome! And Tino Balducci. Only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives? My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective their friend? Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train... This train was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? Yes? <gasps> you startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes, Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. 
Beautiful crypt, wonderful view, good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. Hey! Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? Glad you dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mine. Ah, I can't stay mad at a fellow detective. What do you need? Still don't feel like talking. What's going on? Amateur detective, huh? Ever thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? <laughs> Who doesn't? It's a great job, you know. I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Probably been lying there for a hundred years. It may have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. Nah. Sure, in fact, well, I'll tell you what. What else can I do for you? Oh, yeah? That slug? Uh, I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat, but I thought, hey... Why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot upstairs, but nice girl. Yeah, she always told me they were... I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. Nope, no, never, never went out. Uh-uh, no. Don't you ever stop asking questions? <sighs> I dumped her, okay? I'm not proud of what I did. I'm not happy about what I did. But it's done. It's over. Now let's drop it. You are incredibly irritating, you know that? I dumped her because... Because people said going out with her would make me look bad. Said she was a joke, that no one took her seriously. Said if I started hanging with her, no one would take me seriously. So I stopped calling. No. Now take a powder. I don't feel like talking anymore. Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Suit yourself. You bet. Talk about luck. Here's your pen. Duct tape? Sure don't. But there was this one case at works where duct tape came in real handy. See, I had just collared this. Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Let me take a look. I've seen enough. Two words. Use less. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in pans under the hot sun. Five-star nut job. Exactly where it belongs. Nada. None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. Of course. Whoa, I didn't say that. As a matter of fact, I found this. Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with this buddy of mine in L.A., Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon, or he's toast. And you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can ya? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. Hey, the train could have derailed. 
We're talking reckless endangerment, attempted assault, maybe even attempted murder. Please, who's the top cop here, huh? Who's the world famous detective? You? I know what I'm doing, sweetheart. John Gray wanted publicity. That's exactly what I'm gonna give him. <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you joking? You're just some teenage nobody. I don't have to listen to this. Look, maybe I was a little hasty, pointing a finger at the ghost guy like that. Maybe all those lies people have been spreading are starting to get to me. Maybe I thought it would help if I got a little positive press by solving a crime aboard a haunted train. Maybe I apologize. And, uh, maybe you can see fit not to let any of this go beyond this room? Great. Well, what, that cigar clipper? Uh, go ahead, take a look. He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pins. Tell you what, if you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? But just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world-famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Nancy, right? She could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Of course, it may not look it because that's my style. I'm a low-key kind of guy. But hey, don't worry. Well, as you may or may not have heard, I didn't find the mine. But at least now I know where it isn't, which is just as good as knowing where it is. Sort of. Oh. Don't mention it. Helping people is what I'm all about. Not a problem. Anything for a fellow detective. You lost. Guess you're not so smart after all. Try again. You lost again. One more time. Ah, uh -uh. can't do that. Oops, that's a no-no. That would be cheating. You're out of moves. Game over. You got six lizards. You got five lizards. You got four lizards. Five left. Sorry, you tied me, but you didn't beat me. Here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Okay, the object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours. Probably fell out of the perp's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the break? But why would he do that? Nope. Afraid not. Darn if I know. Sure, I guess. Yeah? Why? Hey, this isn't what my customer ordered. Come on, you back there in the kitchen, pay attention. Make me another one, fast. And do it right this time! Ooh-wee! That Sally's got some voice on her, doesn't she? Hey, this isn't right! What's the matter with you back there? Can't you read? Do the order over and do it right, okay, Einstein? Hey, take it easy on the poor fella, Sally. If he quits, you'll have to cook. Then what'll we do? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wrong! I'm not serving this to my customer! Come on, new guy, make me another and make it right, or else! Hard to think, let alone talk, when Sally goes off like that. Hey, look, Mr. Temporary Cook Person. If I served this, my customer would throw a fit. Just make me what's on that check, okay? That cook had better get on the stick, or we're all gonna go deaf out here. Hey, short order cook guy. You blow it. Fix me what I asked for and fix it right. Got that? Oh, like fingers on a chalkboard. Hey, what's up with you back there? You got the order right. Again. Now wise up and do it right! Yo, you back there in the kitchen, Mr. Loser! You messed up again! Do it over, okay? Now! Wrong again, hot stuff. Guess what you get to do over? 
Wrong. Do it over.